Hello, everybody. I'm Jenny Abney Civi. You might recognize me, or at least my voice, from the Titus Timeout podcast. I've turned those over to the Titus team, but I'm starting a new video series because I'm kind of an HVAC geek and I want to talk about the rest of the HVAC system. So this new video series called 8-Minute HVAC, or maybe we'll call it 8-Minute HVAC, it has a little better ring to it, will cover all the different components that I didn't discuss in the Titus Timeout podcast. But like the Titus Timeout podcast, I'm going to cover one topic or answer one question in each video. So I can't guarantee they'll be exactly eight minutes each, but we'll keep them short and to the point. So let's roll the intro and get started on the first one. So for this first video, I thought I'd just start with a brief overview of the whole system. I'll set up the different components of the system for future videos, plus there's always new people coming into HVAC, so hopefully this will give you a high-level overview of what's going on in the system. Most people outside of the industry think of HVAC systems as air conditioning, but a commercial HVAC system is more than that. The average person probably has never thought about how the air comes into the building from the outside, how it's cooled or heated before it makes it into your office to make you comfortable. You know, how does the 100 degree Fahrenheit 80% humidity air that's outside in Dallas in the summer or the 5 degree Fahrenheit 50% humidity air outside in Milwaukee during the winter turn into comfort air for your office space? Another thing most people have never thought about is what happens to the air after everyone breathes it out. All buildings aren't airtight like balloons, but they're pretty airtight. Since most office buildings' windows don't open, at least in the U.S., you can't keep putting air into the building. You have to exhaust air out of the building. If you've ever been into a building where it was hard to open the doors, or the doors were always blowing open from the inside, you've seen a building that was under positive or negative pressure. They were putting more air into the building than they were exhausting, which is positive pressure that pushes the doors open, or less air into the building, which is negative pressure that kind of pulls the doors shut. So here's how all of this works. So let's draw a building real quick. Put in a door, some windows. And then let's start with outside air. Outside air comes into the building through louvers. If you look at a building, especially a large office building, you'll see what might look like architectural features. So in this case, I made them round and you see the little slots for the louver. But you'll also see them rectangular and other areas of the building that they just look like vertical slots around the outside of the building. This is where the outside air comes in through louvers. Other buildings, the outside air is drawn directly into an air handler on the roof. This is the outside air. This is where everything starts. So now let's go on to the rest of the building. So the outside air passes into the air handler. So let's zoom in a little and look at the air handler. So let's draw the casing. An air handler is made up of heating and cooling coils. We'll draw those in. As well as filters. fans, and dampers. So there are a lot of other components you can get on air handlers, and I'll discuss air handlers in a future video. But that's basically your air handler. Let's draw a little ductwork that'll go into the building. So your outside air comes in, passes through your coils, filter, and fan, and then comes out the air handler as comfort air that's supplied to your building. So the air is in the ductwork now, so let's zoom in and kind of look at the building. So let's draw in our air handler up here. And so at this point, you might have all the air going into a section of building or maybe one section of the floor and it, let's draw it like this. So let's say we have 
three offices, and an open plan area. At this point, all the air is going into the ductwork, but if you want to supply different amounts of air to different areas of the building, then you're going to need to control that somehow. To handle this, the ductwork will split off into different zones served by variable air volume boxes, or VAV boxes. VAV boxes control how much airflow goes into a given zone. So let's look at a VAV box real quickly. A VAV box is comprised of a casing and a control box, an inlet. Inside the inlet you have a damper that controls how much airflow goes to the space. That's controlled by an actuator and a controller, and that's all connected to a thermostat. So let's label these real quick. So now let's go back to our zone, and these two VAV boxes would have a thermostat on each of them. The VAV boxes are ducted to grills and diffusers. So let's draw some ductwork to all these diffusers and label them. And then let's zoom into the space and see what's happening inside our space. So let's draw an office with an occupant in it. Let's open up the ceiling and put a diffuser in and a little bit of ductwork. Contrary to what many people think, the point of the Grillo diffuser is not to direct the air at the occupant, but rather mix the supply air with the room air to make the whole space a comfortable 75 degrees and about 60% humidity. So the air leaves the grill or diffuser and rolls the room to get good mixing. The occupant is cooled by the supply air and they breathe in the fresh air that came in from outside. They also breathe out air and add heat to the space. This warm air rises, this warm air rises so somewhere on the ceiling or high sidewall, you'll find the return grills. Return grills can be ducted or open to the ceiling plenum. Either way, the airflow is being drawn into the return air side of the air handler. So let's bring our air handler back. Let's draw in a damper here and some duct work. So we'll have a ducted return. And from here, it's either mixed with the supply air or exhausted out of the building. So let's zoom all the way back out and look at our whole building. And you can see our air exhausting out here. So that's it. That's a high-level look at a basic commercial HVAC system. Now we can start moving into all these components and many more. So don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. And thanks for watching.